Good morning. Good morning. We are live streaming from St. James Episcopal Church in Skinny Atlas, New York. Welcome especially to those who are online. I'm looking around, I don't see the cameras in their usual places. I, I'll get it in a minute. <laughs> uh, today we do not have a bulletin for this liturgy. We have been short staffed uh, for the last two weeks thanks to COVID. Uh, we are, we will be using the liturgy directly from the Book of Common Prayer like we used to do before so much technology. As always, for those who are online, let us know who you are and where you are. Please do feel free to post comments and to greet one another during worship. The opening hymn you will find in the blue hymnal. It is number 530, Spread, O Spread, Thou Mighty Word.
service continues on page 355 of the Red Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Lord be with you. Also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, in Christ you have revealed your glory among the nations. Preserve the works of your mercy that your church throughout the world may persevere with steadfast faith in the confession of your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our psalm today is Psalm 119, found on page 771 of the Red Book of Common Prayer, verses 97 through 104. Let us read the psalm together. O oh, how I, I love, love your law, all, all the day, day long it is on my mind. Your commandment has made me wiser than my enemies, and it is always with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for your decrees are my study. I am wiser than the elders, because I observe your commandments. I restrain my feet to the deep way that I may keep your word. I do not shrink from your judgments. 
because you yourself have taught me. How sweet are your words to my taste. They are sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through your commandments, I gain understanding. Therefore, I hate every lying way. The gospel hymn is number 711, Seek ye first. Number 711. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Jesus told the disciples the parable about their need to pray always and not to lose heart. He said in a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor had respect for people. In that city there was a widow who kept coming to him and saying, grant me justice against my opponent. For a while he refused but later he said to himself, Though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice so that she may not wear me out by continually coming. And the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long in helping them? I tell you, he will quickly grant justice to them. And yet when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? The Gospel of the Lord. May my words be of you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Chuck and I have mentioned, I think on any number of occasions, that the Episcopal Church uses a prescribed calendar of readings for Sunday and weekday worship. When we're preparing to preach, we don't just sit down and think, hmm, what do I feel like talking about this week? 
This calendar of readings is called the Revised Common Lectionary. We've been using it since 2006. And it's shared by a number of other churches. And in fact, I went to Google, the final authority on everything, <laughs> and asked the question, who uses the Revised Common Lectionary? You probably know, don't you? A lot of people. No. A lot of people. And this is what Google said. Besides Episcopalians, the other churches who use the Revised Common Lectionary, with minor variations here and there, are United Methodists, Presbyterian USA, Disciples of Christ, American Baptist Reformed Church in America, United Reformed Church Lutherans, United Church of Christ, Unitarian Unitarian Universalists, and the Church of England. Which is a really cool thing when you think about it. Because it means that all over Skinny Atlas and all over central New York and in fact all over the world, there are people who are reading and hearing sermons on the same scriptures that we are today. And just in case you yourself would like to uh, see what the lectionary looks like, it comes in paper form, the old-fashioned way. I have an app on my phone, and of course you can Google it and access a free version. The overarching message of this calendar of readings through the course of the year is the story of God's love for and relationship with the world. And during each liturgical season, like Advent, Lent, Pentecost that we're in right now, the message of the lectionary uh, is a secondary story specific to that season. And there is a theme that runs through all of the readings appointed for each week. And we, we hear kind of a signal of that in the opening prayer. There's more to the lectionary than that, but that's the basic idea. So any given week, you should be able to look through the opening prayer and the selected readings and with a little bit of reflection find a theme running through them. So this week I find myself asking, what is the connection between these three texts? Two very definitely speak about God's law. So there's a theme there. But then there's this odd little parable from Luke about a godless judge that's supposed to teach us something about prayer. What on earth? But then I noticed something. In a very, um, I don't even know what the word is, in a very kind of a um, secondary way, each of the readings, in each of the readings, a system of laws plays a role. Jeremiah prophesies about a time in the future when God's law will dwell in people's hearts, a system of laws. The psalmist loves the law and in it finds wisdom and guidance. The judge in Jesus' parable has chosen the law as his profession. And although his moral compass may be a little off, even the judge has an internal guide that helps him make a decision. In this particular instance, it was just his weariness at the woman's persistence. But all three readings in their own way describe principles that guide human beings in making decisions and in living our lives. For people of faith, God's law is meant to be that guide. So think for a moment about your own internal compass the standard that you consciously or unconsciously measure decisions against and behavior against. When I was a child, I was absolutely clear about the system of laws in our household. It was my mother. She had rules. 
and perish the thought if we did not follow them. One, one rule, for example, had to do with leaving the house. The rule was, before we went anywhere, we were to tell mom where we were going and when we would be home. We had to give her these two pieces of information, and if either of them changed before we got home, we had to call her, this was before cell phones, and let her know. So if I went to my friend Sandy's house and Sandy and I decided to go to Maureen's, I had to call my mother. And if I told my mom I was going to be home at 5 and that wasn't in fact going to be the case, I had to call home. I knew it was the rule. But what I didn't know was that the rules that my mom enforced were not just about keeping me on the straight and narrow. My mother's rules actually trained me and shaped me into the kind of person that I am today. I thought my mom was just strict and didn't want us running around the neighborhood. It turns out that the rule about calling home taught me to think about other people people who might worry because they loved me. That rule taught me that an action of mine like forgetting to tell her where I was might cause serious complications for her, like the time that my sister was seriously hurt and my mother had to take her to the ER, but she couldn't find me. That rule and a lot of others trained me to think about someone other than myself and taught me that people who love each other take one another into consideration. When my mother taught me to call home, she taught me that how I behave affects other people. And that recognition is part of the inner guidance that is always with me, like a compass at the core of my being. Would you open the red prayer book to page 350? These are the Ten Commandments. It's part of what scripture is referencing when it talks about the law. And these are the essential guidance that are intended as an inner compass for the people of God. There are others, but these are the core. And they aren't just rules for the sake of having rules. When we internalize these, they train us and shape us in a particular way. So for instance, honor your father and mother isn't just about saying yes ma'am and no sir. It's about holding them in remembrance. It's recognizing that regardless of the kind of parents they were, they gave us life. And that life is a gift for which we owe a debt. These commandments of God imprinted on our hearts become who we are and how we see the world. They become the compass that determines the way we live, how we spend and invest our resources, how we treat others, and even how we think about ourselves and our place in the world. And the result is far-reaching. It's not just about us. When God's law, God's household rules shape us, the result is a, is a world in which everyone is the recipient of respect, justice, care, and the necessities of life. The result is a world in which individuals flourish and therefore the community flourishes. Now in the last verse that we heard from Luke's gospel, Jesus asks a question that seems to come out of left field. He asks, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? 
His tone of voice would make all the difference in the world in how we understand that question, but we don't hear his tone of voice. So it's really easy to imagine that these words are frustrated or disappointed or even judgmental. Will there be anybody who has faith? I don't know. But what if Jesus is recognizing that part of our human condition makes us see God too often as a demanding and harsh judge rather than a loving and endlessly gracious father? I wonder how many of us now and again thought our mother's rules and therefore our mothers were mean. I did. We didn't understand that the rules were about a much bigger picture than our personal enjoyment. Now, I am speaking about homes that were healthy and fundamentally loving. What I'm saying, of course, does not pertain to a household where there was any kind of abuse. But in a loving household, the rules were not there to ruin our fun, but to protect us and others from harm. And so that over time we would be shaped into people of blessing. So I just wonder if Jesus' question was said with a kind of sadness. Sadness that so many people, for a huge variety of reasons, view God as harsh and capricious and quick to be angry, when in fact, God is endlessly loving and forgiving, ready to care for us beyond our imagination. But we have a hard time believing that all God really wants is for us to trust, to trust in God's love and goodness and grace. Perhaps when Jesus asks that question, he is reflecting on the reality that so often we don't trust God's generosity and grace toward us, which only makes our lives harder. Perhaps knowing that about us, Jesus is spurred to make the journey to the cross so that we might see for ourselves the expansive, magnitude of God's love. Amen. Amen. Our parents give us rules. God gives us rules and Jesus elaborated and repeated on them. God gives us rules because God loves us and we try very hard to love God back. And week by week we say that these things that we do believe and on good days we do our very best to actually live them out. If you would please stand again And repeat with me the ancient Nicene Creed, found on page 358 of the Red Book of Common Prayer, 358. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen.
Prayers of the People, Form 6, may be found in the Red Prayer Book on page 392. In peace we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God and His Church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. Pray especially this morning for Amy and Jim. Hear us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. Especially we give thanks for the upcoming marriage of Lydia Pickrell and Sean O'Connor. We will exalt you, O God, our King. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. I want to uh, say a special word of greeting to those who may be newer here at St. James. I invite you to take one of the blue welcome cards that's in the pew pocket in front of you and fill that out and put it in the offering plate. Let us know who you are and um, if there's any way that we can be of assistance to you in helping you connect um, here at St. James. We would love to be able to do that. Again, just uh, for those especially online who may have joined us a little bit later, we, uh, do, there is not a bulletin on the website specific to today or words on the screen. We have uh, been short-staffed for a couple of weeks thanks to COVID, but Michael Larkin is COVID negative and will be back in the office this week. And Laura Pesesnik, who is on vacation, will be back on Tuesday. Uh, so we, it's actually a joy to use the, um, to be, uh, praying directly out of the Book of Common Prayer. So, uh, a happy accident. Well, for those of us using the prayer book, maybe not for Michael and his family. Uh, 
Today, we are participating in Faith and Blue, which is a national initiative bringing together police departments um, and communities of faith. We're hosting this reception in the parish hall at noon uh, for conversation with Skinny Atlas police officers, and there will be coffee and food, so please come back and join us if you can. I think it'll just be a wonderful informal opportunity for conversation. We have been announcing that Sacred Ground, uh, two sessions would begin this week on Zoom, but we have decided to postpone it a couple of weeks in order to give time for people to sign up. And I wanna say just a little word about um, this program. Sacred Ground is a curriculum that uh, has been designed by the Episcopal Church for the Episcopal Church. It is part of an initiative through the presiding bishop's office, and it has been picked up as initiative by our bishop here in the Diocese of Central New York. Our sisters and brothers who are Hispanic Americans, Asian Americans, Native Americans, African Americans, are asking those of us who are white Americans to listen to their stories. So when you're thinking about participating in this program, it's not so much a question of, is this something that interests me, but I am being asked to listen. We are being asked to listen, and to listen with open hearts to the experience of others so that we might help to build a beloved community. If you have not done so, I urge you to consider participating in this course for your own sake, for the sake of our beloved sisters and brothers and for the sake of the world. You can, if you are interested, you can either speak to Linda Lavery who is sitting right here in the front row or um, feel free to call the church office and we'll be happy to take your name and answer any questions that you might have. October is the month of community service. I do encourage you to go to the homepage of the website and sign up for any volunteer opportunities or donations. The collection day is next Saturday here in the church and it will be in the parish hall uh, because we have, we'll have, be setting up for a wedding here in the nave. All Saints Sunday is just a few Sundays away and one of our traditions at St. James is that we put out slips of paper and pens and baskets on all of the window sills and invite you to stop um, before or after worship or after communion and write the names of those that you would like to have remembered on All Saints Sunday. We will be reading them aloud and uh, a num among a number of other things that we will do on that day as a very special remembrance. I do wanna thank all those who have turned in pledge cards for the annual stewardship campaign. They look like this. Uh, if you are planning to pledge uh, for 2023, please do turn in your pledge card this week. And thank you also to those who have pledged to the Give to Grow campaign. That pledge card looks like this. Uh, we are planning, the, the team met this week and we're planning to give you an update in early November so um, you'll get to hear more exciting news about that. We come now to the time of communion. And uh, just a reminder that it, there will be two chalices, and if you choose to receive wine, we ask that you drink directly from the cup in accordance with diocesan guidelines. But do know that if you choose to receive bread only, you are receiving the full benefit of the sacrament. I have some names of people who are celebrating birthdays. Bennett Vienne, Joanna Latre. See a big smile over there. BB Dang, Alwal Dang, Marsha Watt. I know of, of a couple of wedding anniversaries, Kathleen and David Underwood and Eva and Dan Pajak. Are there any others? You, you? You have an anniversary. Oh, I actually saw that. Yeah, happy anniversary. And a birthday? You don't sound... Steve, you don't sound happy about that. <laughs> no, I'm very happy. Uh, wow, the alternative. Yeah. Right? So 
if you would, please, well, that's a, what a, what a great bunch of birthdays and anniversaries. If you would, please turn to page 830 in the prayer book, and we will say together prayer number 50. O oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Know that whoever you are and wherever you may be on your journey in faith, you are invited to the Lord's table this morning. great thanksgiving begins on page 361 of the red book of common prayer the lord be with you you. lift up your hearts let us give thanks to the lord our god it is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you father almighty creator of heaven and earth For by water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord, to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is, the blood of the, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The congregation may begin coming forward.
standing, sitting, or kneeling as you prefer, let us pray. The post-communion prayer is found on page 365 of the Red Book of Common Prayer. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bev, take this sacrament from the altar of St. James. May it nourish and bless and comfort our sister Dorothy. Amen. And the peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and always. And the closing hymn is number 535. peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Forgot the hallelujahs.